Breaking ball, chop foul. He's staying on the ball. He's not quite getting the timing down to do anything with it, but he's staying on it. Clayton doing a good job of trying to mix the pitches in with the off-speed pitch, the breaking ball, and see if he comes back with a fastball. And a foul. So fastball away, and Brandon's doing a nice job of just hanging in there. It often comes up during the course of the Major League season, the record for foul balls, most pitches seen, and I, I just happened to look that up the other day as it's, we're seeing a series of foul balls. Legend says 17 straight foul balls. But records don't show that. The count goes three balls and two strikes. The record that is held. Let's see. Let's see if he painted the outside corner with that pitch. Yeah. I agree with Yeah, that. a little bit outside. A 20 pitch at bat is the highest it's been remembered. And that's not going to go that far, maybe. He's never found ball. Who knows? <laughs> and that was uh, actually happened back in 1998. Ricky Gutierrez pitching for, or uh, playing for Houston in Cleveland, an interleague game against Bartolo Colon. That at bat included 14 foul balls. He eventually struck out. Hey, 20 pitches is the most on record. Now, we know that, uh, what do we got? There's someone else getting tossed or what? Probably arguing that close call over there. Probably telling him to uh, ease up on the bench. <laughs> but Greg, I, I hope there wasn't a runner on first base in a 3-2 count. <laughs> That's what you have to worry about. <laughs> that would have lost a lot of weight. 3-2 <laughs> pitch. That's probably the way. We should have been counting. How many, how many has he had? How many pitches have gone on this at bat? We're up go to 12 go. pitches in this at bat. Hey, go eight more. At least tie the major league record. We're here. <laughs> no, that's going to be laced to center, but it's going to be handled. That ball was hit hard, but Infante's right there for the first out. He got some good hacks in that at bat. We're at... Uh, Olsen Field at Texas A&M. Greg Lucas here along with Jack Lazorko. College baseball from the Big 12. A 4-4 game to the 10th inning with one out between Nebraska. Ranked 10th in the highest ranking of the four poles. And Texas A&M. Nebraska 7-3 in the league. There's a breaking ball that does not stay off of and it's a strike. Curtis Ledbetter. Huge power, got a double his last time up, his only hit of the game. Hit two home runs last night. Nice yeah, nice breaking breaking. ball up and in, and the next one was down and away. Now Curtis is wondering, where is he going to come? Is he going to come with that breaking ball away or try to get me, bust me in with a fastball in? Tried to go in, balls ripped to right field, coming over for it is Baldwin. Near the track, makes the pass two out. You got away with that one, you're right. He wanted to pitch away. But that thing tailed back in and luckily had enough on it. Well, Ledbetter didn't get the meat of the bat on the ball. You saw that shot of Baldwin, the, the sun glistening in the glasses. That is a real tough sun field right now, right field. As the sun sinks in the late afternoon, it is right in line with some of the balls hit out there. Now, Daniel Bruce. Do you think we'll be named Bruce? You know, Doug, you know how guys kid around the, the triple play, man? <laughs> DP. He's playing right field. Mm -hmm. well, that happened in the fifth inning, and it could have been a big inning for the uh, Cornhouse Bruce because the first two men had reached base, obviously. And then he lined into a triple play. There's a bouncer to third. Willis, and we go to the bottom of the tent. We're still tied at four. You're watching the action on FSN. Take the tour with FSN as we go behind the scenes to find out how the Big 12 South's football programs are shaping up this year. FSN's Big 12 Spring Tour kicks off at UT today at 5.30, only on FSN. It's an experience like no other. Oklahoma versus Texas. Tonight at 6 on FSN South. Now's the time to 
Get connected. It's game day, baby. Because when you get HBO and Cinemax from DirecTV, you'll be connected to the original series that get people talking. Major Hollywood movies. What took you so long? And a year packed with $3 billion worth of box office hits. And you'll get it all with 10 channels of HBO and Cinemax to choose from. Order HBO and Cinemax online now at directtv.com or call 1-800-DIRECTV. HBO and Cinemax. Get connected. All the baseball you want and then some. MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. More of your favorite players. More of your favorite teams. And all the tennis races. Up to 60 games each week you won't get if you don't call. MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. Are in control. You're watching FSN Southwest. Aggie fans whooping and a holler in between innings as we go to the bottom of the 10th. It'll be Boggs, Malk, and Margolis. And the first pitch is chopped foul by Austin Boggs. 0 for 4. 4 runs, 11 hits, 2 errors for Nebraska. 4 runs, 9 hits, 1 error for Texas A&M. It'll be interesting to see, you know, you bring Jensen in the closer. You get one inning, but now you've got to go an extra innings. How long, how long do you keep him in there? Last week, like we said earlier, he went four innings against Texas. We'll see how long he stays this time out. And one pitch. That's fouled back. One ball and two strikes. The errors in the game have not factored in the scoring. All the runs are in. Zach Kronicke went 95 pitches. Five of the third innings for Nebraska, giving up three runs all in one inning in the third. Three pitchers, chopper out to Simo Titus. Quick release. One out. Nice play by Joe coming in, making a nice play, and off balance throw to first base right on the target. And that's always a thing when you're on the road. You know, if you don't score, your close has got to go out another couple innings if he's going to stay out there to get the uh, get the win. Falk has a single, a stolen base, a walk, a single, and a fly out the left in his appearances in the game and takes the first pitch for a ball. He fouls that one. Texas A&M has hit 26 home runs this year in 40, in 38 games, 39 games. That's foul. One ball and two strikes. Jim Lawler over there, the pitching coach, and that's it. You're going to have to get deeper and deeper in the pen. Well, it appears at this point, if they go any deeper, it's going to be the same pitcher because there's nobody throwing in the Aggie bullpen. We can't speak for the Nebraska pen. It's hidden behind the stands in right field. There's a base hit to left field. There's out singles. His third hit of the game with one out here in the 10th. That's the 10th AM hit, all singles. <laughs> see here, Jensen coming in. And see, Justin throws him the fastball, comes back in, and they sit in the hole. You see, Gordon was just covering the line just a little bit. And that's sometimes what happens in extra innings. You see him cheating a little bit towards the line to keep away from the dog. Going to see Mike Anderson coming out. Well, there was a pitcher. <laughs> yeah. Because he just made a signal. He's bringing a left-hander to pitch to Mavrolis, who uh, was not effective against the left-hander earlier. We will tell you all about the new arm. That's going to be Tony Watson when we return. FSN Southwest, the only sports network that puts Southwest fans first. The Southwest Sports Report. You're passionate about sports. A complete nightly newscast will take you behind the scenes for exclusive interviews and in-depth stories. You come to the right place. The Southwest Sports Report, nightly at 10. Southwest Sports Report. FSN Southwest. Hold on. And the Rangers are down one nothing. Here it comes. Ranger fans want no part of that one. 
Brett Jensen's finished. He went an inning of third, four hits, no runs. The runner at first base would be his if it would score. But if it would score, the game would be over, and he'd be the loser. Tony Watson is the new pitcher. This will be his 11th appearance. You keep seeing these Nebraska pitchers come in, and these numbers so great. The only thing that's a little bit less great with his, he does want a few more, but there's not a single pitcher, a, not a single pitcher on the Nebraska roster with an earned run average higher than 3.6. That's 3.6. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that shows you how deep this staff is, and he's bringing the lefty to face the lefty. He, he didn't want Jensen to go too long. Have him ready for tomorrow. And the first pitch is a strike call. Mavrola struck out twice against this left-handed starter, Conicky, then he sacrificed a third time. Facing a right-hander, Jensen, he popped out. Rollis was also the man responsible for the one Aggie run last night with a home run. One ball and one strike. Watson, six foot four, 195 out of Grime, Iowa, freshman. He won a prestigious Iowa award anyway, the Bob Feller Award as a top high school pitcher in Iowa. I guess Bob's the greatest all time from Iowa. <laughs> Amazing though, we talked about it earlier, getting these freshmen into the ball game, and you know, he's got it for another four years, three years. One one pitch is chopped to the right side. That'll be first base to Watson for the out. Moving into scoring position at second base with two out is Powell. Unintentional sacrifice, because you're not really a sacrifice, but you get him in scoring position two out, you all takes that one base hit to, to win the ball game. Donnie Infante is the hitter, the center fielder. He had a base hit his last time. In fact, he scored the tying run in the ninth, and now what a maybe he's going to make another change. Yeah, just bring the lefty on the lefty. He did his job, got the lefty out, and like we said, we get, they got a deep bullpen and go out and bring the righty in. And this time, it's going to be number 25, and that is Ryan. Bohannon. We shall tell you about him after we take a quick break. Next week on the Best Damn Sports Show period, the legendary Pete Rose tells us who's the real deal in Major League Baseball. Plus, die-hard Lakers fan and the next action star, Ice Cube, comedian Anthony Anderson. Plus, we continue our NFL Rookie Challenge with USC defensive end Sean Cody, Maryland's Sean Merriman, West Virginia's shutdown corner Adam Pac-Man Jones, and Florida State quarterback Adrian McPherson. Next week at 10.30. Stakes are high on the Poker Superstars 2. Now the weekly tournament heats up as the world's best players go all in for their piece of a purse worth over $1.2 million. The game's biggest stars at one table at one time. And the only place you can see it is FSN. The Poker Superstars 2. Tournament continues Sunday. Well, we're still tied at four. We're in the bottom of the tenth, and we're going into the third pitcher in this half inning as Ryan Bohannon, the right-handed freshman, is in. And he's only at 0.79. Yeah. You see that 11 strikeouts, three walks, obviously only 11 innings pitched. 11 and a third. Another young player coming in on the roster, another freshman coming in. And you see these freshmen getting a lot of work in these conference games early in their career. You see the program that Mike Anderson is building here. These kids get an opportunity to play conference play right, right from the get-go. Out of Goddard, Kansas. And Infante will get a look at him with the winning run at second base. Two outs in the tenth. Bohannon's first pitch is a strike. And in, in a situation like this, these hitters haven't seen a lot of these freshmen. This is the first time they're seeing them. Pitcher has an advantage sometimes. They don't know what he's throwing. Well, we've seen it already. He's got a good slider. Yeah, good breaking ball. He he's came in throwing it. Throwing it twice. No balls and two strikes. He 
doesn't have a slider with great speed on it, so to the hitter it looks like a mediocre fastball until they start to swing and it slides. There's just a fastball out in the way. One ball and two strikes. And that was a show him fastball. You see Christie looking into the dugout. There's the potential winning run. The Pauk scores, he is it. There's a fly ball, center field. Going back toward his memo. Still going back. It is off the base of the wall. The Yankees win it as John Infante bangs one to deep center field in a celebration on the field. He threw one too many breaking balls. He hung it up there. He threw the fastball, hung the breaking ball, and Infante drives it off the center field wall, and the Yankees win it. Five to four. The Aggies hung in there all day today. And they took 10 innings, but they finally punched the winning runner across. We'll get credit for a double or the runner scoring from second base, and he proceeded to tag the bag. So we'll get credit for a game-winning double as the Aggies win it, and there he hung it, and he drove it. Hung it and banged it. Two hits, and Fonte scored the tying run in the ninth, drives in the winning run in the tenth, and... Uh, Nimmo had no chance on that one. He, had not, he didn't have a chance on it. You see, how coming out to score the winning run. You got to give the Aggie pitcher some credit. They hung in there. We'll take a break and be back to see final thoughts in just a moment.